Okay, so for this video what we'll do is we'll have a look at Republic Services, which is the American waste management behemoth and direct competitor to uh, waste management in the United States, which has a bit more of a market share than Republic Services has, but it's definitely the number two. And the main reason that I want to have a look at Republic Services is because uh, just two weeks ago we had a look at Veolia uh, Environment, which is the European waste management behemoth that we have over here. And I always mention the difference in multiples when it comes to comparing the valuations between the two companies in Europe and in the United States. And therefore, I want to actually have a look at this so we can actually compare them directly. So what we'll do is we'll quickly run through the financials of Republic Services. And then we'll uh, have a look at Veolia again and just see how they differ when it comes to the valuations. So yeah, real quick, when we look at that revenue, we see that it's been steadily growing from 8.1 billion all the way up to 11.2 billion, seeing a nice spike here in the COVID pandemic. Um, it's important to note here as well, though, to be fair, that Republic Services is just a waste management company and they don't do things like water treatment or uh, water desalinization or things that Veolia does in addition to its waste management. Republic Services is just a waste management uh, business. But that being said, um, the revenue is growing nice and steadily, about 3.7% um, year over year, which is similar to what we've seen with uh, Veolia as well over here in Europe. Now looking at their EBITDA, which is earnings before interest, uh, depreciation, taxes and amortization. So before any kind of accounting gimmicks, basically their flat earnings. Um, we can see that it's been growing uh, about 4.5% year over year, which is um, faster than the revenue has been growing. So this means again that their margins are increasing, although only only slightly so, right? There's been a slight increase in margin, but not too much to really write home about. When we look at their debt level, the debt level has started up at 7 billion in 2012 and reached all the way to eight, uh, sorry, 9.6 in 2021. On average, it is an increase of 3.6% year over year, which is growing um, at a slower pace than their earnings is, which is kind of what we like to see to make sure that they're not over levered because Republic Services is kind of on the boundary what we um, would consider a risky investment. They have no excess cash on hand. They very much like to spend their cash, which is fair enough. It's their right to do so. And if they ever come into a pickle, I'm sure they just borrow it. Um, yeah, this is their choice to make. Now we look at market cap, and here we see like a very interesting story. I usually don't want to really want, don't want to pay attention to to market cap, but um, I think what we could see here for the last three years that their market cap has been almost doubled in three years' time. Right, that's like an average return of about um, thirty three percent a year, which is crazy. Um, but this is mostly because whenever they have free cash flow, they make sure to use that free cash flow to buy back their shares and to give a bit of a dividend as well. This is what you will see as well. Uh, their shares outstanding has been steadily decreasing over time and this really makes for a uh, big return on, um, on investment for, for investors. Look at the enterprise value we can see here as well that it's been uh, steadily going up, especially in the last three years because of the increased share appreciation in their market cap. Their EV EBITDA ratio has started off at 7.8 times and during 2021, the COVID pandemic, it reached all the way up to 16.1. Now, when we looked at Veolia, I think the highest number was about 7.8, with for which for Republic Services is the lowest number. And this is why I always um, try to hint towards whenever I'm looking at a European company that the valuation is just uh, a lot lower than for American companies, just less saturated because the American market just attracts a lot more of foreign as well as domestic investors and therefore their valuations are a bit higher. Looking at their debt levels, um, it's always ranging around the three times. Now it's fair enough and it's, it's good for them that they're actually able to maintain uh, this three times ratio and this is where they want to draw the line which is very much what I like to see. Although to be fair I think it's a bit um, too leveraged for me, it's a bit too risky but it's exactly at the, the threshold that we uh, that I like to put for whenever I look at companies, I like to use the three times threshold, which they are exactly on top of three times. So um, yeah, I guess we'll give them a pass for that, but they're definitely uh, in a risky territory. Looking at the cash flow from operation, it has been growing steadily by 7% year over year, which is actually quite impressive. They've been able to make more and more money out of their uh, landfill and recycling business. 
their capex, which is their capital expenditures, everything they need to put back into the business to make sure that they can operate like new garbage trucks, uh, new, uh, new uh, brush and paints, um, new linings for their waste fills, everything that they actually need to uh, make sure the business is running is included into the capital expenditures. And what we can see, it's been risen from 900 million to 1.3 billion, which an average growth of 4%, which is again growing less fast than their capital. Uh, sorry, cash flow from operations is, which just like with revenue and EBITDA means that their margins are increasing. Looking at their free, uh, free cash flow, now this is actually the most interesting story and the biggest reason I think why um, Republic Services has been seeing such an increase in their stock price as well. It's because their free cash flow has um, well more than doubled, one and a half times actually in like the last uh, 10 years, which is quite impressive for a stable business like Republic Services because it's, it's waste management, right? People will always produce trash and um, waste fields and recycling centers will be a thing even more so in the future with like increasing po increasing population there will be increasing garbage and will be increasing waste and Republic Services is in a very good position to um, cater to this demographic for the upcoming well decades probably so therefore it's a very safe business they have their contracts in place with, mun with municipalities and with governments and they have a uh, steady cash flow for the upcoming I don't know how many years now looking at the next place, uh, shares outstanding, which I mentioned, they have been drastically reducing over the last 10 years. Every year they are buying back shares slowly but surely, which um, as an investor is always something that we like to see because it means our percentage of the business is increasing even though we're not doing anything to actually cater to that. It's because they're just diluting our restaurant, sorry not diluting, buying back the shares and uh, reducing the overall pie, the percentage um, of the company. So about 2% a year, which is um, a big number to uh, reduce your share count by year over year. So good for them to really make sure that they're giving the maximum value to their shareholders. So I think this is like the common trend here with, the Repub with Republic Services is that they very much um, value their shareholders and doing the best they can to make sure they provide value for them. Looking at free cash flow per share, similar to what we've seen with their overall net free cash flow, it's been increasing quite fast. It's uh, about three times what it was in 2012 compared to 2021, which it started off at 1.74 and ended up with 4.76. Now that is a big, big, big number, right? Their free cash flow has um, grown about three times in, 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 in 10 years, which again is like a big reason for their... Uh, share appreciation and it's just like it goes in tandem as well because like not only is their free cash flow growing quite steadily their shares are decreasing so uh, when it comes to free cash flow per share which is the metric that we use here um, it's a double whammy right it's it's everything you can wish for as an investor and this is what we see as well when we look at the price per share because it started off in 2012 for, with uh, 23 dollars and all the way up in 2021, it reached 124. I think the maximum even in 2022 was around 140, 150. So, um, yeah, that's about a six times uh, increase when in their share price over 10 years, a 600% return on your investment in 10 years, which is in insane. It's actually insane. The waste management business has been skyrocketing in the last 10 years. Looking at the free cash flow yield, we can notice that it's circling around 4% um, over the last 10 years, even reaching as low as 2.6 in 2019, which is very, very, very low, right? I mean, what, what this um, free cash flow yield basically means is if you have a look at the share price uh, at that time and you look at the amount of free cash flow that you can uh, expect from that share, and you divide that because like this is your pro rata ownership of the company right like the, the free cash flow is your part of the company that um, belongs to you um, at the end of the year after they've paid all their expenses and everything the free cash flow is left in, in their vault and it's meant for you as the shareholder as the shareholder or the investor um, this kind of belongs to you and so if you divide the price per share by the free cash flow that you can expect you get to a level of 2.6%, which means that every year you get returned about 2.6% of your investments. Now, that means that you need on average the business to run with the current cash flows anyway for 40 years. 
before you can expect to pay back your investment. Now that's a long time. And of course, like the free cash flow is, is growing, but just as a metric for that year, it's, it's, it's ludicrously low. And this is again in line with what I always mentioned that the American market is a lot more oversaturated than the European market is. So looking at EBITDA, because the EBITDA has been growing on average for about 4% here, as you can see, um, 4.5 actually. So what I'm going to do, because I want to be conservative whenever I make a forecast, I want to be conservative. And if that conservative forecast beats the stock market, that's when I'm interested. So for the first five years, I'm going to go ahead and say, you know what, I do expect you to keep on growing at at least 4% uh, a year. Historically, they've been doing more than that, but I want to be conservative, so I'm going to say 4%. And after those five years, I'm going to reduce it down to 3% because I'm not sure what's going to happen, right? Um, maybe they won't grow as much. Maybe there's not uh, many more landfills to, to make the place. Maybe the garbage is going to be decreasing because we're more uh, environmental prone and do more about recycling and have less waste. It's possible. I'm not sure what the future is going to hold. But if that is um, a thing that might play out that way, then I'm going to want to take a conservative estimate. So I'm going to say 3% for the last five years. Looking at their market multiple, the EV EBITDA multiple, it started off as eight times and it's reached all the way up to 16.1% during the COVID pandemic. But again, this is a COVID blimp. I don't expect that to stay. And I think historically for the last few years, they've been circling around the 11, uh, 11, 12 times mark. Maybe actually even 11, I think may actually be more, more accurate there. So I'm just gonna give them an 11 times multiple, which leaves me with a enterprise value of 51 billion, less the debt at the, well, measly amount of cash that they have on hand. And it's a market cap of 42,000, uh, sorry, 42, billion dilute the shares oh sorry actually i have to subtract the debt of course because i want to try and get to the market cap i was looking at that i was a bit confused there but you have to subtract the debt because we want to go towards market cap because we want to be interested in what the share price is going to be not the enterprise value so divide the market cap by the diluted shares and we get to a stock price of 132. now looking at the free cash flow um and this is a bit more tricky and we get more into speculation here because their free cash flow has been increasing rapidly, rapidly for the past 10 years because they've become a lot more efficient in operating their business and their uh, cash flow from operations is growing a lot faster than the capital expenditure is. And add to that the fact that they're buying back shares at a very high pace, their free cash flow per shares has been increasing very, very fast, 12% year over year, which is actually insane. Now, do I expect them to maintain this free cash flow increase growth? Um, I don't think so, no. So that's why I'm going to give them 10% for the next five years because they've been doing a lot better than that historically. But I don't think they'll be able to maintain that. And I want to be conservative whenever I make an estimate. So I'm, I'm going to say 10% for the next uh, five years and then 7% for the five years after that because I'm still not sure what's going to happen. Uh, but I want to be conservative. I'm going to give them a free cash flow yield of 4%, which is what they've been doing historically. And this includes the very high free cash flow yield in 2012 of 7.4%. Now, for the last few years, they've actually been quite uh, a bit below the 4%. In all fairness to them, they've actually been uh, trading at a higher multiple there. But I want to be conservative, okay? Just to give you an estimate of what it looks like, if you put it at three times, uh, 3%, sorry, it's, it's going to be increasing a lot, right? A lot. But I want to be conservative. I'm going to say 4% free cash flow yield, not 400%, that's a bit too much. Uh, 4%, there we go. Which gives me a stock price of 276 and 62 cents. So right now, I can buy as many shares as I want for $125. The free cash flow method gives me 132 and the enterprise value gives me a value of 276, which is a massive, massive difference. But that's because there's such a big difference in the way that their uh, earnings are growing and the way in which their free cash flow is growing because their earnings is growing at 4.5% and the free cash flow has been growing at 12%, which is a world of difference. And that's one of the reasons that the uh, different models give me such a different number. But I'm not sure which one's going to be right. Um, I'm going to split them down in half and meet them in the middle and say, on, on average, I think the stock price will be 204%, uh, sorry, $204 10 years from now, which gives me a compounding annual growth rate, growth rate of 6.4%. 
Um, on average, the market returns about 10%. So I do not expect Republic Services to beat the market because they're actually underperforming it by like a few percentages here. Um, but it's a very safe business, right? And if they're going to keep on buying back the shares the way they have, and if it's going to be as um, saturated a company as it's been in the past, it might just defy expectations. But with the financials that I have right now in front of me, I do not expect Republic Services to beat the market. I think the, the safety of their free cash flow and their free cash flow increase has already been priced into, uh, into the stock. And therefore, I don't think this is a good investment. But now let's see if we can actually compare Republic Services to uh, Veolia Environments. I'm just going to bring up Veolia to the right here and Republic Services to the left. Um, so what we can see here, if we just look at their multiples. Uh, let's see, there we go. EV EBITDA multiple here, the lowest is 7.8, the highest is 16.1. And for the European counterpart, its lowest is 3.9 and its highest is 6.6 .6 type multiple. That is lower than the lowest that the Republic Services has ever been, which again is beyond me to a certain point because um, the European counterpart is so much more undervalued when it comes to just their, their earnings and the free cash flow and like the intrinsic value of the company compared to Republic Services. Um, it's actually beyond me and that's why I think there's so much value to find in European companies that go under the radar quite a lot because you always hear about the American companies, the big American companies like like Tesla or like Apple, Microsoft, Microsoft, hello, Microsoft, but like even uh, waste management has become quite a, a staple name in the safe, safe stock business. But it's very, very overpriced right now with the current uh, multiples that it has and the same goes for public services here if you compare that to a European counterpart. And that's why I really want to advise people, uh, especially people who mainly invest in the American markets, to maybe have a look uh, across the pond every now and again to see if you can find some value there, because there's definitely value to be found. I think Veolia is a perfect example of, of, of value that, uh, that can be found. Now, if we just uh, have a look here at the models that we use to actually predict uh, potential stock prices here in the future. If I'm going to take the same multiple um, for Veolia that I gave to Republic Services, their stock prices are going to increase and the compounding annual growth rate is 32.5%, which is ridiculous. If this stock got the same valuation as your American counterparts um, is getting, it, it's... <laughs> It's going to be the best investment that I can advise anyone to take. Now, I know that's not, not true, and the American market is considered to be a lot more of a safe haven and a better place for investment. And we can see that as well, to be fair, in the way that their uh, cash has been growing. The free cash flow for public services has been growing at a very, very high pace, uh, a lot higher than, than uh, Veolia environment has. But nevertheless, um, I think if anything, if there's something that you take away from this video that it is that have a look maybe at companies that fly under the radar and see if you can find value away from the mainstream stocks, away from the Teslas, the Netflix, the Apples, the, the Microsoft, the Metas, the, um, even the Intel or the AMDs. Have a look at some of the less known companies to see if you can find some value there. So yeah, this was a quick uh, stock analysis on Republic Services as well as its comparison to a European counterpart to have a look at the different valuations there between the two continents. Um, if you liked the video, please subscribe and like and all that good stuff and I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio!